Okay, this is Roberta Felicki Paneski, and we are going to call to order the Redevelopment Authority meeting for the City of Sheboygan um, this Friday, March 27th. Uh, let's do a roll call. Alderman Wolf. Here. David Soxby. Here. Steve Harrison. He was not present. David Gass. James Owen. Here. Amy Horst. Here. And staff, would you identify yourself? Chad Pelishek. And Janet Dolman. And Janet Dolman, she's not on the speaker. Okay. And Chuck, and are Chuck you still? Chuck Adams, yes, the I'm attorney. Great. Okay. Um, let's pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> um, if we could look at the agenda and identify a potential conflict of interest, are there any conflicts of interest? Uh, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Chair, this is Chad. I think James Owen is going to have to... Uh, Ed Stain and not even participate in the dialogue on the Three Sheeps Brewing one, so he can probably, that's why it's at the end of the agenda, he can probably just sign off. Okay, James. Okay, James can do that when we're finished with discussion 3.2. Uh, you had minutes from the previous meeting from March 4th. Um, Chair will entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Uh, identify, your, identify yourself when you do that. Wolf. Wolf, move to approve. Soxy, second. Are there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor uh, say aye. R Roberta, we need aye. to. Roberta. We need to roll call. We need to call a roll call. Right. Roberta okay. Flicky Paneski. Yes. Uh, Alderman Wolf? Yes. David Soxy? James Owen? Sorry. David, uh, James Owen, yes. David Soxy? Yes. Uh, is Dave Gasson? Yes. 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 Okay. All eyes. And Amy Horst uh, is also on. Oh, yeah. Amy, sorry. Can you just say aye? Okay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, okay, if you recall, we, um, from time to time, when we have an outstanding loan, we are asked to subordinate that loan uh, in some other manner than when we initially um, pass the resolution to supply that loan. Typically, it's a change of bank, um, but it comes to us periodically. And at the last couple of meetings, we discussed giving staff the ability to, um, in a pro forma manner, um, have those loans subordinated because it's, it's basically a tactical thing. Uh, you have in front of you, and it was sent to you previously, the uh, subordination policy regarding um, development loans from uh, HUD. Um, if you've read through it, does anybody have any questions about that particular loan, uh, that particular policy? Chuck Adams here. I've made some edits to it since uh, it went out to you. Uh, I'm happy to walk through those. We'll have to, uh, when you approve it, we need to approve the policy as, as amended. Um, okay. I would also Wonderful. note that there's no need for you to, to approve the form. Uh, and in fact, I would not, I would encourage you not to approve the form because that's really, um, Chad can just change forms as needed um, based on your policy, so. Okay. All right. Um, Chuck, the before you start, the, the one thing that I noticed um, 
in number two on the policy, um, we, we won't agree to a subordination if the loan is in default. My question is, what about taxes if they are in default with their tax payments? So this policy only uh, li limits the denial, the automatic denial, to a subordination request for a loan in default status. So taxes uh, don't play a role in, a, in this policy. So let me give you an example. We could have a loan that was in default, a loan that was not in default, but they were in default for city taxes. We would have no authority about denying the subordination. So in, in that case, um, the policy would still authorize Chad to subordinate. That doesn't mean he has to. Um, what this policy is doing is giving Chad authority to, to act, um, but he doesn't have to act based on it. Um, he, the, what you're doing is putting a fence around how he may act. So, um, so you could narrow the fence by adding that provision in there, um, or you could keep the fence where it is, and Chad can, at times when he sees that he's getting close to the fence and understands that the RDA might be concerned about it, he can still bring it to RDA. But if he chose to follow this policy, um, basically, um, you know, you don't have any complaints if he stays within the bounds of the policy uh, and makes those calls. Okay. Does anybody else on the committee have questions about um, either the, the policy numbers one, two, and three, or the criterions numbers one, two, and three on that policy? Chuck, do you want to go through your change, your final changes? Yeah, I can. If Roberta, if you're ready for that. Yes, please. Okay, so the one change is very simple. It's just adding the word only in um, paragraph two so that the second sentence reads, the redevelopment authority may consider a subordination request only if a loan has not been in default status for a minimum of 90 days. It's just to provide some clarity. Um, the other change is in the first, the, the, the paragraph right above the criteria. Um, and the change here is mostly just for clarity as well. Uh, that, that paragraph would read as follows. Assuming the subordination request complies with each of the criteria below, the Director of Planning and Development shall be authorized to sign off on requests to subordinate the redevelopment authority of another lender. Chuck, I missed you with the dinging of somebody signing in or signing out. Can you read that again? Sure. Assuming the subordination request complies with each of the criteria below, the Director of Planning and Development shall be authorized to sign off on requests to subordinate the redevelopment authority's interest to that of another lender. Request to subordinate the redevelopment authority's interest. Okay, in accordance with, okay. All right, any question about those criteria? Any Mr. Amy, I would make a motion to approve second, with the amendment. Second. Approve as amended. Okay. Is there a second? Second, Dave Sassy. Thank you. Are there any other additions, corrections, discussion? Okay. Hearing none, uh, Chad, if you want to read the rule. Yeah. R Roberta Flicky Paneski? Yes. Alderman Wolf? 
Dave Soxie. Yes. Dave Gass. Yes. James Owen. Yes. Amy Horst. Yes. All eyes. Okay, the motion. I'm also on the phone, so uh, Steve Harrison. So uh, I guess I would have an eye on. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you, Steve. Yep. All right. Um, discussion on 3.2 ground lease termination for um, uh, the Blue Harbor. Chad, if you would like to give us some background on this, please. Sure. So um, this is in regards to the discussion we've had as it relates to the transferring of the conference center at Blue Harbor and the city ultimately maybe getting the Pentair property. Um, this is an exhibit to that transfer agreement that has not uh, necessarily gone to council yet. It's still being negotiated, but uh, Blue Harbor is recommending that this uh, assignment of the ground lease and the termination of the operating lease. So under the current uh, terms of the uh, contract with Blue Harbor, they, we own, the city owns the conference center. Um, the property all under the resort and conference center is ground leased uh, for a dollar a year. And then there's an operating lease between the city and Blue Harbor to operate the conference center on our behalf. With us transferring the conference center over to them as part of this deal that the city's working on, um, that term there would be a termination of that operating lease because they wouldn't need to operate on our behalf because we wouldn't own it. And then they would assign the ground lease under the conference center um, to uh, Blue Harbor versus the city um, as part of that deal. So the this is really a... Um, just something Blue Harbor requested. I think Chuck could chime in and say that, you know, he's not sure that it's necessarily needed, um, but that they would like to see it. In, and since the uh, Redevelopment Authority was a party to the two agreements previously with Blue Harbor, um, Blue Harbor is requesting that this be executed. Okay, so initially the city had an operating lease with Blue Harbor, and the RDA was party to the city's operating lease because we own the property. So we're clarifying that as, as the operating lease is now transferred from the city to Blue Harbor. It's, it's, it's Chuck Adams here. It's actually the, the ground lease um, the, the operating lease was between the city and Blue Harbor, and the ground lease was between the RDA and the city, and now the ground lease will be between uh, RDA and uh, um, Blue Harbor uh, because they will now be the owner of the uh, property, and it will terminate then that operating uh, lease between um, it will terminate the operating lease because there'll be no need for it. The other thing I would add is, as Chad has pointed out, we're still in the process of negotiating. I, I you know, I, I think it's, it's we're, we're pretty close. Um, we're really just kind of waiting for uh, some answers on a couple of things, uh, and we're close enough that this exhibit is in final form. Uh, if you approve it, my suggestion would be that the motion would be to authorize Roberta and Chad to sign um, at, at, you know, at such time as the, um, uh, the agreement is made between Blue Harbor and the city. Uh, we don't want to sign it today. We want to sign it when we're ready to sign it. Chuck, my question to you is, will the RDA be seeing a ground lease between the RDA and Blue Harbor, or is that already baked in? So the, the ground lease is going to remain the same. So uh, you you have a ground lease with uh, the city, and um, that ground lease will be exactly the same uh, with uh, Blue Harbor. And so that's what you're doing here. It's just you're agreeing that that uh, that the city's portion of that 
um, ground lease is now moving over to uh, Blue Harbor, but there's no change in the ground lease. Thank you. Are there any other questions? If you have to move to adopt uh, subject to uh, approval uh, by the city attorney. I will second. second. Or whatever you want to, however you want to say. Okay. We are able to sign it such time that it's appropriate to sign it. Um, was there a second? By the city attorney. Right. Wolf second. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all. Uh, Chad, read the roll. Roberta? Yes. Alderman Wolf? Yes. Dave Soxie? Yes. Dave Gass? Yes. James Owen? Yes. Amy Horst? Yes. Steve Harrison? Yes. All eyes. Thank you. That motion is carried. Um, we now have discussion and possible action on 3.3 .3 from Three Sheets Brewing. And as previously noted, uh, James Owen will be excused from this discussion and this action due to a conflict of interest. All right, so I will jump off the call then. You can. Thank you, James. Appreciate your appreciate your attendance. Thank you guys. Looking forward to meeting in person soon. Great. Okay. okay. Yeah, bye -bye. All right. Um uh Chad. Um did everybody receive the correspondence with um with Grant Polly? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes, I would move to uh, approve the action requested by Chad in his written request for development. Wolf second. Okay. The, and the, and the, what was suggested by staff is that we move to approve interest-only payments of $5,471.17 for April, May, June, July, and August. In September, so for the next six months, um, and at which time he will resume normal principal and interest payments. Is there any further discussion? I guess the question that I have is um, for discussion is what do you guys uh, how. How do you hand? How do you want to handle the principal payment? Do you want if they just stall it, um, and they, you know, I, I, the reason I recommended interest only is just to keep them on pain so that you know when we go back to principal and interest that they're, they're you're still paying something. But the question is, is what happens to the deferred principal payment? Does it? Does do they just pick it up at the? We re-amortize, or do they just pick it up at the end as a balloon payment, or how does that work? Roberta, is that something that we can leave open to the to the uh, to the you know to three sheets? I mean, I'm fine extending it because of these circumstances. I I would say extend it, just just extend the principal payments at the end of the. Right, the because Roberta doesn't doesn't the uh, doesn't any of the any any company have the ability to pay it off sooner, right? Yes, we do. They do. So we then, do really, too. we just have to make a motion that we're allowing them to extend it by this many months or whatever. Right. Chuck Adams here. The one thing you have to think about there is that you will still have a principal balance with some amount of interest at the end at that point. Um, so th the question might be whether the more appropriate action, what Chad has described here is just simply allowing them not to make uh, those principal payments. Uh, and you know, one option would be to just limit it to that and make determinations about how to handle um, you know, the additional principal at a later date. Um, if you do nothing, it would be the balloon payment at the end. Um, but you, you can also 
you, you can also delay making that decision if you'd like. Um, it, it, and, and I don't know whether uh, Chad's had any conversations with Grant about this particular issue either. I talked to him about interest only payments and he accepted that because he said that's comparable to what the bank is doing, but he wasn't sure. I, I guess we didn't really talk in detail about the the principal payments. So I guess you guys could make a motion to just defer the principal payments and maybe let the staff, you know, work through that piece as Alderman Wolf just recommended and just have them continue to pay interest payments and we'll figure that out given the timeliness of this. This is Dave Gass. I, I think that makes sense because um, obviously this massive um, bill that is trying to get to Congress next week or um, suggesting that companies will be able to apply for forgiveness based on the pay on payroll and a whole lot of other provisions all of which may provide some payments, direct payments to companies for costs incurred during this time period. So, so what I'm hearing is that we are, we are in agreement for doing interest-only payments of 5471.17, and that if need be at a later time, we determine what happens with the principal from those payments. Agree. Okay. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion as such. I thought, I thought we did. I make a motion. Oh, well, we made a motion and seconded. Okay. We yeah, have that's a what motion. I thought. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any more discussion? Okay. Hearing none, Chad, call the roll. Roberta? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman Wolf? Yes. Dave Soxie? Yes. Dave Gass? Yes. Amy Horst? Yes. Steve Harrison? Yes. All eyes. Okay, the motion carries. And that was. Roberta, be... motion to, motion to uh, adjourn when you're ready. Okay, <laughs> I was just going to call for that motion, Alderman Wolf. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Been seconded. Are there any objections? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you so much for the meeting. Thank you. Everybody, be safe, everyone. Yes, can you give me a call, please? Dave Soxie? Thank okay. you. In the office. Okay. What was that? Hi, everyone.